Hi there. Um, so I'm really interested in how climate change science is communicated, but I'm a pretty cynical person, and honestly, I feel like the best method we have at the moment as a people is Game of Thrones. <laughs> and that's using the example of ice zombies. Um, you may laugh, but I'm a climate scientist working in, in Arctic fields, and I find people find my work a lot more urgent if I say something like, None of you know about the true threat in the North. <laughs> we can't always um, choose when we communicate our science, so sometimes we're put on the spot. Um, for example, I'll be in a taxi, and the taxi driver will ask me to explain my research. And sometimes I think, oh, this could be a really great conversation, or I could have to justify my life decisions repeatedly for 20 minutes. <laughs> So I have a story for you guys about a story that made me really think about my duty as a climate scientist to talk to the taxi driver or, or a date or a family member. So I want you guys to think way back in time to the distant past of 2009. Um, so uh, you might remember a news story called Climate Gate. Uh, if you don't, this is basically an issue where a number of climate scientists at a local university, uh, well, to me, University of East Anglia, had their emails hacked, and um, effectively the hacktivists claimed to have found in these emails definitive proof that um, climate data was being manipulated, and the climate scientists were trying to seek academic and political prestige, and this was only weeks before the disappointing Copenhagen Climate Summit, so it was quite a tricky time for the climate community. Now, what I find really interesting with this event looking back is that my current field of research, dendroclimatology, was caught up in the middle of this drama. So, dendroclimatology, what is that? Well, I'm here to tell you it's a word with seven syllables. <laughs> um, which is a huge red flag that it might not be accessible to the public, right? Um, but it's actually a pretty simple idea. So, uh, as, as you know, trees make tree rings, and dendroclimatology is uh, the study of tree ring characteristics, such as tree ring width, um, with climate change. So, uh, certain warming and cooling events will have an attributed uh, type of growth, and you can track this uh, change back up to at least 400 years, and it's a really useful tool. But there is an issue here, and the issue is called the divergence problem. Now, the divergence problem occurs with trees in the, in the high north, and this is when they become so physically stressed by uh, rapid climate change and drought situations that they begin to um, slow down their growth patterns. So they were going kind of like that before year on year, and now they're kind of going like that. You know, they're slowing down. If you want to think of this as a tree version of a, of a midlife crisis, <laughs> go ahead. Um, now the issue here, and going back to the, uh, e the email hackers, they found a particularly juicy thread on the email where the climate scientists were using these tree ring data sets, and they were talking about a trick to quote unquote hide the decline um, in global warming in the last century, and obviously this caused a huge firestorm in the media. Now, what actually was the case and was found out in a huge international peer review was that this was just the scientists statistically correcting for the divergence problem. The tree wasn't declining in tree ring growth because of a cooling climate, it just was having a midlife crisis. <laughs> So even though this work was found to be uh, valid and perfectly legitimate, the damage had already been done. A lot of people who uh, don't trust climate science attribute it to ClimateGate way back in 2009. And this just makes me think, because my field of research is, is quite niche, niche, there's seven whole syllables in the word, um, it's my duty to talk to the taxi driver and talk to my friends and talk to my date, even if the date thinks, wow, this girl sounds an awful lot like Al Gore. <laughs> and at the end of the day, I don't have anything published yet. If a hacker were to get into my account, all they would find is many, many repeat orders of uh, Game of Thrones memorabilia. Thank you very much for listening.